Welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm Sheridan Nichols. Well, new businesses are popping up all over our community, and in an effort to sustain this growth, the City of Bristol has recently expanded the Economic Development Department. We've got Christy Halsey here today. Welcome to Bristol. Thank you. It is great to be here. I bet it is, and she's going to share with us her new title. Business Development Specialist for the City of Bristol. And you are going to help bring and attract new businesses to Bristol. That is our goal, absolutely. Um, downtown is growing tremendously, so is the rest of Bristol. Um, so it is great to be a part of that and be part of, I guess, what will be the new Bristol Renaissance and what's to come um, in the future. So it's great to be here and be a part of that. Well, we're excited to have you, you on the show. And you know, we haven't met you before, so tell us a little bit about yourself or your background and how and why you decided to come to Bristol. Sure. Um, I grew up in Kingsport, Tennessee, and my husband grew up in Johnson City. Uh, we got married and moved to Chattanooga, have been there the last 10, 11 years, and we're ready to come home. <laughs> so we wanted to get back here to the Tri-Cities. Unfortunately, my husband found a job with his employer back here in the Tri-Cities, and um, therefore I was able to move along with him. and. Um, we have found it great to be back home and I was very excited to get the opportunity to get the job with the City of Bristol. I'm sure, yeah, I can only imagine it would be great to just come home mm -hmm. and then have this exciting new venture right. ahead of you. You've said it's, it ha really hasn't been that challenging, it's just been so exciting and invigorating. It has been. It's um, very similar. I worked for the Chamber of Commerce in Chattanooga and okay. so it's it's similar um, to what I was doing there but it's still different. So it's, it's really exciting to have a, a new part of my career uh, take place. Um, I was very interested in economic development in Chattanooga but that was not my very specific job so I watched and saw a lot of that because we did do that at the chamber there um, so it was very exciting to um, be able to to come here to Bristol and have the opportunity to actually get involved and actually work in economic development. So tell us a little bit about what we'll expect in Bristol and what did you see when you came in? Did you think, oh, okay, this is great, or do we have some room to improve? Well, um, when I first came and visited as I was interviewing up here, I was really excited about downtown and what it looked. Um, I could tell that there's been some renovations, some new businesses have come in. Um, a lot is beginning or has happened already downtown, and um, certainly Volunteer Parkway and Highway 394, beginning to see some development there, um, and a lot of folks moving out into those areas as well. So I think um, what's so exciting about that is there's different areas and multiple areas of our community that are going to be growing. Which is nice. So you can say, well, if this doesn't work, you can always try this area. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of areas that can be right. highlighted. There's Were you surprised at the growth in Bristol? I think it's it's pretty amazing. Not really. I, I really thought it was because I knew, you know, our, our other twins in the Tri-Cities or other folks in the Tri-Cities, um, John City and Brist or Kingsport, have both experienced a lot mm -hmm. of growth. So, um, and then, of course, up at Exit 7, a lot has been going on. So That's it really right. was just Bristol's time mm -hmm. um, to begin the growth. And so it was really exciting to come down and see what all has happened and the improvements along Beaver Creek and um, the light post and signage and other things that are happening here. So what are some of the immediate goals that you have? Immediate goals for me, obviously to learn <laughs> exactly what all is going on and what the city does. We have several different economic, economic development partners okay. that we work with. And so what are our, our roles and what are their roles and how do we work together? Um, those relationships have already been built. Um, I've been here about four weeks now, so I've had a great opportunity to meet with all of those partners and um, learn what each of us are doing. So. Um, after now learning a lot of that, it, it's helping to bring business in. Well, this is exciting. Well, we're so glad to have you in Bristol. Thanks. Is there anything that I'm missing that you want to add? I don't think so. Just I, I can't express enough how exciting it is to be here and be a part of the future and what's to come for the great things for Bristol, Tennessee. Oh, and maybe a new website to come. A new website, yes. We are going to be working on a new economic development section for the city website. So we can all easily log on and find out about that. Absolutely. Well, Christy, thank you so much for being with thank us you. today. Thank you. Glad to be here. After the break, we'll take you inside Bristol's largest music festival. Listen up, music fans. Bristol's Rhythm and Roots reunion is just around the corner. Here to give us details is Inside Bristol reporter Jess Mutter. In the Southern tradition, Reunions tend to come with a lot of baggage, but here in Bristol, we call those guitars. And coming up faster than you can pick out some Tennessee too, 
is Bristol's annual Rhythm and Roots reunion, September 14th through 16th. It's no secret why Rhythm and Roots commands such a celebratory presence every September, filling downtown with the sights, sounds, and smells of great Americana. Everyone knows about the great shows that crop up, such as this year's performances by Robert Earl Keen, City in Color, Dr. Dog, Folk Soul Revival, Delta Spirit, and more, but don't forget about the rest of our exciting events this September such as the 5K Road Race and Two Mile Fun Walk Saturday morning. The action starts 8 a.m., and all participants receive a one-day pass to Saturday's events, with the first 600 gaining the opportunity for a free commemorative t-shirt. Registration is $20 until September 9th, and $25 after the date. Forms are available online at bristolrhythm.com to either submit electronically or hand deliver with the registration fee to the festival offices at 416 State Street, Suite A. But not everyone wants to add a few extra miles to an already walk-heavy weekend, and if that's the case, you can't miss our family events at Cumberland Park by the War Memorial, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. With music for the whole family, as well as a kid's climbing wall, petting zoo, bouncy houses, and more, it's a perfect diversion from the State Street traffic. And if that's not enough, our annual chili cook-off takes place at 10.30 Saturday morning on the very same block. Combined with your favorite vendors and artists, there's no good reason not to get your tickets today. Weekend passes are going for $40 from now until August 31st, $50 from September 1st to 13th, and $60 at the gate. One-day passes can be purchased as well. For Friday's events, a one-day pass is $25, for Saturday, $30, and $20 for Sunday, with kids under 12 getting in for free. Every purchase allows for the option of a $2 donation to help fund the Bristol Country Music Alliance's Cultural Heritage Center. For more information, as well as a complete lineup of artists, please visit bristolrhythm.com or call 423-573-4898 to reach the festival offices at 416 State Street, Sweet A. For Inside Bristol, I'm Jess Mutter. Thanks, Jess. Well, when we come back, we'll tell you about some changes coming to a classroom near you. Welcome back to Inside Bristol. Well, as summer comes to an end and school gets back in session, this year for Bristol students, there will be some changes in the curriculum. Here to tell us more is Dr. Annette Tudor. Thank you so much for being with us Absolutely. today. Thank you for having me. It's always nice to have someone in education here to tell us what's going on with our schools. And this year there are some changes and it has to do with the curriculum. Yes, ma'am. So what's going on? Well, for the probably second time in about three years, Tennessee has decided to transition to a different set of standards. And so we are just now in the throes of that transition. So we've spent some time um, really beginning back in January training our staff members and so our summer really has been devoted to the transition to the common core state standards okay so what does this mean for the classrooms and does it cover k through 12 or what what range yes actually there's there's really um a variety of transitions and okay. so it will cover k-12 but at different degrees depending on the content area and the grade span so um, the focus for this upcoming school year, um, kindergarten through second grade, will have full implementation of the new Common Core State Standards, and they are only in math and English language arts. Okay. So those two content areas, full implementation in grades K through 2. Um, our third through eighth grade teachers will focus on math this year in that transition, and that's a statewide initiative and an abbreviated um, transition to that. They will focus on two focus standards for math in each of those grade levels for this entire school year, in addition to the regular TCAP standards that we've been focusing on okay. for Tennessee for the past several years anyway. So they'll have to do kind of double duty on both of those, but the, um, the focus standards really correlate very well with what we're doing for Tennessee standards anyway, so that'll be a seamless transition, we hope. Um, and then we have elected as a school district to voluntarily join um, and in support of the English language arts transition. The pilot, there, the state is offering a pilot program. And so we are doing that and that is actually all grade levels. Oh wow, okay, so what will that involve? Um, that actually involves the addition of four writing assessments throughout the year. Okay. Um, we have one at, at, in February that's been a requirement for several years in the state of Tennessee that is 
administered at fifth, eighth, and eleventh grades. Okay. This pilot will actually be four additional assessments at wow. all grade levels from three through twelve, actually. Um, so, and there's a shift in what the, the writing assessment will actually look like, which is a part of the Common Core transition. The, okay. um, the standards um, really, rather than being very broad and having a large number of standards, we're really narrowing our focus and having fewer standards so that our teachers can go in much more depth with the okay. students and understanding those um, standards. It's really a focus overall on problem solving for our students and using higher order thinking skills which are college and career readiness skills and getting them ready even as a kindergartner or first grader or second grader preparing them for college skills. Well that is a lot of information so what does it mean for the general parent? Well what it means is they, they need to be prepared for their students coming home and feeling a little bit frustrated unfortunately. The shift in what's going to happen in the classrooms is teachers are going to give students time to problem solve and collaborate with one another and think through things rather than a teacher just giving the content and the student memorizing it and having to give it back on a test. It's going to be a lot of the students formulating how to solve a problem. There are multiple ways to solve a problem and that's what we do in the real world every day. So it's teaching them those skills, not even so much a heavy emphasis on the content, but how to think and how to problem solve to come at a solution and realizing there are multiple ways to do that. So I think there will be a little bit of frustration on the students' part because it's a shift in how we've taught our kids. So parents need to be prepared for a little bit of that frustration, but in supporting the students to say, this is how you solve problems. This is what we do and this is how, you know, if I'm a parent and I'm right. working in the real world, this is, this is what we do. So helping to support that initiative and support teachers certainly in trying to make that shift. Right. The standards are a little bit more rigorous too, so the content will be uh, challenging for them. So just being prepared for those types of things. So as a parent, if we want more information, what should we do? Well, first and foremost, I'd suggest you visit our website, which is btcs.org. Um, there is a link to the curriculum page, which has more information specific to the Common Core standards. And we'll, we intend to send home information either um, with students from school, from their teachers, or information that we would send home as a district, helping parents become familiar with this transition. So, and, and we also intend to have some parent informational sessions, so if they want to come and speak with any of the school officials, their teachers certainly should have information. So we just encourage them to communicate with, with their teachers and principals, and the district will be doing the same throughout the school year. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll be right back. Have you ever wanted to own a historical part of Bristol? Well, a new twist on a classic board game gives you the chance. The recently released Bristolopoly allows players to purchase a part of Bristol. It's a Bristol-themed version of the famous Monopoly board game. Bristolopoly is filled with Bristol landmarks, area attractions, local businesses, and live music venues. So have fun choosing your race car, guitar, or Paramount sign game piece to help you tour your favorite Bristol properties around the board. The new game costs $30 and is available through bristolrhythm.com. Thanks for watching today, and if you have any suggestions or a comment, feel free to shoot us an email. Until next time, have a great day. I'm Sheridan Nichols for Inside Bristol.